Hi everyone, welcome to the second round of lectures. And this week we're going to ease into some basic notions of first order languages, first looking at constants, which work like names, and then predicates which apply to constants to make atomic sentences, which are true or false. We'll then wrap up with a brief discussion of some general aspects of first order languages. Right, here's the first part, and it's pretty brief. We're just going to introduce the ideas of constants and some rules governing their use. Now, constants just work like names. We typically write them in lowercase. So we have names for things like Andy, Sarah, and so on. But we can write these also just as lowercase letters from the beginning of the alphabet, like A, B, C, and so on. And that's what we typically do. Now, there are three rules for constants that we're going to go over here. The first rule is that constants must name existing things. So it's perfectly fine to have a constant like Toronto, which we could write as T, or just to pluck an example from physics, a constant like C, which names the speed of light. But it's not okay to have constants for things that don't exist, like Gandalf, Sherlock Holmes, and that sort of thing. Now, this might strike you as a bit weird, and if that's the case, then you're not alone. And there's a whole class of logics called free logics which don't require that the things named exist. I'll make a very brief video outlining the basic idea of free logic to end this week, although the video will, of course, be optional. On then to rule two. Rule two is that one thing can be named by multiple constants. So imagine we have one item here in the domain, an object D. It's perfectly fine to have a constant C, which picks out D, and another E, which also picks out D. If you want an intuitive example, you can think of Clark Kent being named by both Clark Kent and Superman. One of the classic examples from the literature is the morning star, or phosphorus, and the evening star, or Hesperus, which both name the planet Venus. So that's perfectly okay. What's not okay, and this is our fourth rule, is for one constant to name more than one thing. So imagine we have two items in our domain, D1 and D2, and these do not equal each other. They're completely distinct objects, but they're both named by C. This is unacceptable. In summary then, constants must name an item. One thing can have many names, but no one name can apply to many things. And that's all we have for constants right now.